Hello, hola, good morning, America, ciao ciao. This is Princess Oka for you. Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember these images with a little angel sitting in the back of your head, or in the back of you, or being in the back of you, or sitting right behind you as you take a bath, and he sits right there. Right behind you, a little sweet angel, completely neutral to you and the bath. That is how my child was sitting. He's got your bag. That's all. Yeah, maybe he's gonna scrub my bag too, but he never did in my vision. Art is pretty clear, and I think these visions are clear too. It's just that we sometimes or often don't really pay close attention to them. It's like we know it all, but we don't want to look at it. Or we do want to look at it and we can't do it right now. Whatever I did in my life, whoever I all the time I was just kind of giving myself out there for people I always knew it was like a waste of my time in a way for myself it was a waste after I did not really wanted to continue talking and I kind of had to and I knew it too I was kind of pushed to do stuff because I measured my dream against it and nothing ever happened I was always looking for where is my dream my love. I couldn't even engage as a person with people in the way I wanted to. Yeah, I said I always wanted to have people around me like-minded because even those who I considered friends, yeah, it doesn't matter. Marilu, I tell you about her. She was a nervous wreck. She wasn't, yeah, maybe she was a friend for shortly, but not at all. I was always missing something more, I don't know. I don't even know how to name it. Deep, more true, more real. It's probably what it was, is more, wider. It's like when we are like together, even in a family, sisters too. It's like everything what you see around your breath is like the breath, the air. And we can share all this. But in my life, maybe I created a little, like a little straw of that air in between the darkness and the dump. Maybe Mother Lou, that was a little straw. Yeah, as, as long as she looked, which was seldom. Because she was so traumatized. Yeah, it, everything is dark and there's a little straw between her and I. And a little breath can go through there. So it's a tiny, 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 tiny bit of truth in it. So that's that. Yeah, while I had been bombarded with with her traumas. It's not that I mind, it's just one thing is you're going to be the therapy for, therapist for a person. And the other thing is that you're going to have a friend you can hang out with. I did not really hang out with her, although I saw her a few times. I felt amazingly sorry for her. Amazingly. Marilu, she had this push, push life, push, 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 but she came from, I don't know, rich environment, and she was pushed out of, I don't know, what Guadalajara was it, to Mexico City. Yeah, probably had, she had some nervous breakdown, narcissistic mother. She was intended to make ends meet. I most likely met her in the environment of model. Because there you go and do, you do your work briefly. She taught me a few things. Like the dishonesty about the Catholic girls, she said. I, I remember, I do not ask, I don't know anything about anything, I just listen what people have to say. She said, oh, they all pretend they're virgins, but they're none. It's all just a big farce. Maybe that it came out was new too. Because somehow, I, I don't think girls spoke like that. It's not like in an American locker room. 
where they are presumptuous about who fucked whom. No, it's the opposite, I think, in Mexico Catholic. They don't even say it. They all pretend. That's why they're all so snippy. <laughs> Because I was hiding something. Yeah, whatever. I come from big deal. So, you have a boyfriend, so you make love. Big deal. What's the big deal about it? Yeah, well, in Catholic, there is a big deal. So it's all dishonest. But that was then and now is now. Because in the vision that we have this, not just a straw of connection, but we have the hot air space of connection, the things are put into a different perspective. I ask myself that very question. Must you be married before you have sex? Or must you get to know your partner? Maybe even a year, two years before and then get married? These are valid questions. Nowadays, no one will say, what the fuck? Get married, bring a virgin. Or maybe people say yes. But it is all about, to me, it is all about get to know him in order to see if you actually want to go there into intimacy. And I stand for that. And I still stand for that. And this is what this vast field actually does to us. Where everything is air, we can share it all. And we actually are sharing it. It's just that within that there's different vibrations, like different frequencies, different radio frequencies. And in certain we and I, we can engage and we can get to know each other. And of course also with the fact, what we show. Yeah, the little we can show right now. The understanding of things, often depicted in nothing, in short movements which last seconds. Because it's not the movement, it's the intent about it. So we can get to know each other. Now, Madelou, she... Okay, so she was with Enfermin. That was later. Not when I hang out with her. Enfermin, her name is... Um, it, it wasn't Ephraim, it was... Um, Fermin, actually. Fermin. What a weird name. Yeah, he could have been the brother of Ephraim. Or, or, or what? Cousin, I said. Whatever. Yeah, because they looked a little bit alike. In a way. Yeah, he was also very white. And he lived, I don't know, like, let's say in La Radura. There's a few more of those. And they have different names. But it's like the same style. Kind of rich kid. So she went for a while with him. Of course, took over the household, everything. I don't know if he lived with his parents. I, or they weren't there. I don't know. I, I went only once. Yeah, she introduced me to him. Yeah, and that was funny. Because he was so tied up. Totally nerdy. And she taking care of everything. Because she had this push of making things happen. That my companion... He told, he called him Enfermin. Since for like, I'm so ill. It's super funny. Anyway, my little told me, she talked to me about the, the rain, about the vaginal orgasm. Yeah, she was the one who talked to me about it. That when a woman has, you know, Is sex and there is love involved over a certain amount of time that besides everything else what can happen that a woman can actually have a vaginal orgasm and other okay means coming actually rain out of her vagina and it's kind of weird to say it's like water it's not it's just like water and it produces itself with the love sweet water when there is love involved. To the extent that I went to ask my 80-year-old gynecologist who was the director of the UNAM once. I don't know which part of the UNAM. I don't know if the general or just one section. He said so. Or maybe someone else told me. No, I think he did. So a man of experience who knew a lot of things, was relaxed enough to just look at the life because he already had lived his life. And so ask him about it, literally. And he said, I don't know. 
I have no idea. I've never heard about it. <laughs> so that's all I know. But I'm kind of wide open. <laughs> because I think that's just what it comes down to. Well, what you do is you exchange love. And then eventually you come and you exchange love also in the body, in the physical. But first and foremost, you exchange the love in the field, in that shared field. 